You're uh, you're from Atlanta, as I am, and uh, yeah. you went on to perform at the World of Sid and Marty Croft, which I've covered on this uh, YouTube channel before. You've seen the uh, uh, little mini documentary we did about right. that, where right. it, it wasn't open for very long, but you were you were there for that as a uh, puppeteer. I was, I was. You know, all through high school, I was the nerdy puppet guy. Whenever I had to do um, <laughs> reports at school, stuff like that, I would always let the teacher would always actually want me to do them with puppets. So I always, you know, it was a great way to meet girls when I was in high school uh, because <laughs> I, was, I was a very nerdy kid. And, but they all wanted to be on my team because they knew they'd get a good grade. So that was great. They, were, they, were, <laughs> they may not have been good puppeteers, but who cared? Um, so <laughs> my friends and I would always do our reports like history class, we would do something with puppets. And um, I built the characters. So by the time I was about, I guess, 18 or so, I, um, I'd done a lot of corporate -y things and, and built puppets for other people and birthday parties and stuff like that. Um, and the world of Sid and Marty Croft opened and I didn't even know about it. Um, a buddy of mine who I went to high school with, a guy named Gary Kepke, who's also an Atlanta person, originally from Michigan, but has been here for years, was the, the world champion ventriloquist at that point, at, at his age, like 18, 19. Um, and so there's a, obviously a crossover between puppetry and ventriloquism to some degree. And Gary went down, they were, they were looking for a ventriloquist for one of the parts at Sid and Marty Croft. It was this kind of a cool effect. Uh, the top, the top, what, you, what you did at, at Croft is you went into this building and you went up this giant, the world's longest freestanding escalator. And when you got to the top, you get off of this thing and you work your way down through these eight levels of what is now CNN Studios and CNN Center. So on that top level, when you first arrived, there were all these things that were like um, circus trailers. Like, like uh, you know, you'd go to a circus and you'd see a lion in a cage or, or you know, a guy juggling or whatever. Uh, and one of them was a huge crystal ball where a ventriloquist, their head, they were through a table, their head was inside the ball and they did a puppet next to it where the puppet talked to the head and like read your fortune. <laughs> so they wanted a ventriloquist. So my friend Gary went down to audition for this. And at that point, when we walked into this, this massive structure, the Omni, the windows were all blacked out. It was under construction. Uh, in, this, in, this, in the first early, I guess that would have been the early part of that year. And the, the ground was all dirt and they built the outer structure and they were, I mean, it was a, a construction zone you know, hard to imagine. And it was dusty and there was noise and construction. So they, were, so they were holding auditions in some little room there. And I just went down just to hang out with my friend Gary. I wasn't auditioning there. I, there was nothing there that I was looking to do. Um, and so Gary auditioned with a puppet I built. It was a puppet of a, of a small baby. Uh, and he would do this ventriloquist thing where he would walk around with this baby all wrapped up in blankets and he would do this baby crying, you know, and you didn't see his lips work, his lips moving. And then the baby would turn, it was a puppet, and he, the baby could talk and make baby noises. And it was, a, it was a ventriloquist thing. So he used that puppet to audition. And I had my, I always traveled everywhere with my little trunk full of puppets. So I had it with me. And I said, if you want to use one of the other puppets, you can, whatever. I'm just waiting outside. And Gary came out and I said, well, so how'd it go? Did you get the part? And he said, well, I don't know yet, but they want to meet the guy who made the puppet. And I said, okay, so, I mean, talk about being totally cool, calm, and collected to go into an audition, because I, I wasn't auditioning. I was just going in to meet these people. It was fine with me. I go in with my puppets, and there's this table. I remember it being about 100 people, but it was probably only three or four. Uh, <laughs> Sid and Marty Croft were there, and uh, a bunch of other people, you know, producers and various people at a, at a table, at a big, giant, empty space in a construction zone. And then you had a chair where you sat out in front of them. And I, I wasn't auditioning, I was just there. So I was, I was fine. And they asked to see my puppet. So I, I had a few. One of the puppets that I had that day was a puppet of Kermit the Frog that I had built. Uh, and it was pretty bad. I mean, it wasn't a great Kermit, but I built Kermit because I built all Jim's characters, you know, his Sesame Street characters. And so I essentially <laughs> auditioned for Sid and Marty Croft with a Kermit puppet. I also had this character I built called Otis who went on to do other things. Um, <laughs> but I remember them offering me a job 
right there that day. Um, and they said, what we'd like for you to do is walk around the theme park with, with a puppet and just talk to people, just greet people and say hello to people, have conversations with people. And I thought, well, that's great. I can do that. Um, and, and they said, and I remember them, I remember, I think it was Sid or Marty said, but you know, of course you can't use Kermit here. And I said, oh, no, no, I, I know that, of course. And, and, they, and I said, well, how about, and I had Otis, this other character that I had, I pulled him out and they said, so maybe him, you can use him, you know, one of my characters. So the ironic part of that is, as you might guess, if you went into a theme park these days and auditioned for anything, no corporation would ever allow you to use your own character in their theme park. It's just no way, because they don't own it. Uh, and Sid and Marty were both fine in the late 70s or wherever this was for me to just do this. So my dream job, my first job was to, was, and I, I kind of gravitated after walking around the theme park for a while to the top level. And I became the, 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 the greeter when people got off the escalator. It was me and a couple of the other people who were actors who would greet the guests and then send them on their way through the theme park. Yeah, I've heard uh, stories about people getting to the top of that escalator and getting bothered by mimes and uh, oh, <laughs> whoever yeah. else was around there. There were a lot of mimes. There were a lot of mimes. <laughs> Uh, there was a couple of guitar players who would sing to you. And then oftentimes when I was on, on my shift or whatever, there was Otis. And um, I'll tell you an interesting thing about the, the experience in that theme park. One of, the thing, one of the psychological things I learned in that theme park as an 18 year old or whatever I was, was that if, cause sometimes you have little kids come up and they were great, but they were overstimulated, excited and they start pulling at the puppet. I had a kid pull one of Otis's arms off one time. Oh gosh! Uh, and, and there's only so much you can do when you're there. You can't, you know, you've got to still be the host of this place. You can't say anything or do anything. I just had to go repair him. So, a lot, so if I felt kids were spending too much time or it's, they sort of needed to move on, we were done. <laughs> Otis would say, Otis would end the conversation with them by talking, 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 being nice. And then just saying, okay, well, thanks very much. Bye. And nine times out of 10, every child would say bye and leave, whether they were done or not. It was the weirdest, somebody should do a psychological study on that. That they, they just, it's time to end the conversation. So they left, you know. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> did, you, did you get a chance to hang out there a lot, go on the rides or? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and there were no real thrill rides there per se. It was, you know, it was, you know, it's really interesting. My perception of what was going on there uh, at about the four-month mark, I guess, they a, did a major refurbish of the park. Uh, and it, it was, I think it was doing pretty well at that point um, in terms of attendance. They, they changed the focus a little bit to be more live performers. A lot of local Atlanta young actors and actresses, not just young, but people, singers, you know, were performing there. It was very, very much centered around performers. And the changes they had made had really improved the overall place. Uh, and then that was about the time the, the, I guess it was, and I could be wrong about this, but my understanding was it was out of state financing on most of this. Some of those people hadn't been to the theme park even. And attendance dropped when kids went back to school. And I think the kind of the point was it wasn't supposed to drop because it was an indoor theme park, whether it wasn't weather dependent. Yeah. But still, still, when kids went back to school, they weren't coming to a theme park. <laughs> so that's that was my understanding of or my what I heard as to why it fell apart. But it was just really getting good, you know. It had really improved and gotten on its feet, and it was only about six months, and it was gone. You know, I we found out about it. A lot of us found out about it on the local news. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Before before I got to work that afternoon. They took us all into a room and told us it was happening. And we were horrified. We were, you know, everybody was, it was like, you know, we, we were all such enthusiastic people about the place. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Cause it just, it looked like a blast and everywhere you turn, it's just something new. That's just blowing your mind. Yeah. It was a great idea. I think, uh, I think one downfall was that thing about kids going back to school, but that, that probably happens in any theme park. But I think the other part was, um, refurbishing something in an indoor theme park, I probably didn't take any more work than you would at a Six Flags or something like that. 
but it meant you had a huge construction zone that was a major part of your place. It was a limited space, you know. Uh, but I remember it well. I mean, during the, the big grand opening night, it was just this star-studded event with all these big stars of the time. You know, I mean, major TV stars and movie stars. Uh, and of course, at that time, I don't know whether you have any reference to Burt Reynolds, but a famous actor mm -hmm. who was uh, really, really popular at that point in time. And uh, he opened a restaurant also in the same complex called Burt's Place. And uh, it was all, it were always celebrity. It was the celebrity place wow. to go in Atlanta. So he, of course, was at the Croft thing. And then all the Croft celebrities afterwards went there. And you know, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Carter was running for president. And he came through with his family and his, young, at the time, young daughter. And anyway, it was great. I mean, it was such a heady <laughs> time for all of us who were young people, you know. <laughs> Did you get to do uh, uh, your uh, puppetry act with any 